Welcome to my 13th video on reinforced concrete design using Eurocode 2. We continue with the analysis of section. This time we look at the flange section. Textbook for this video, flange section. Let's start with the basic question. What is a flange section? The answer it is a structural member that has a cross section of with the shape of T or L instead of the usual rectangular shape we analyzed in the previous videos. The next question is why bother to have a shape like that? Why can't we stick to the rectangle? The ans to answer this question, I have to show you the typical cross section on a, of a beam slab system that looks like this. From this diagram alone, can you determine what, where are the beams and slabs? As far as the material inside these structures are, structure are concerned, they don't care. Materials or atoms behave exactly in, in accordance to the laws of physics. They have no idea, nor do they bother about whether they are classified as beam or slab. The, one, or the only ones who care is the structural engineer. The structural engineer must define the boundary of the beam from slab in order to ensure structural stability. The slab must take must be able to take sustain imposed must be able to sustain imposed load and transfer them to the beams. While the beams must take their imposed their own imposed load plus those from the slab and transfer to the column. Thus, it is crucial that wherever you define the the beam as beam, you must ensure that the whole section must be able to take all the loads thrown at it. So where are the beams in this picture? The easiest way is this. This is the most common boundary of a beam, easiest to analyze and to construct. All the analysis we have done in the past is based on this model. However, there are limitations. The width of the beam is limited. Smaller width means small, smaller compressive capacity from the concrete. To overcome this limit, we can do this. We enlarge the beam's boundary at the top. This is why we want to consider flange. This is the flange section we are about to study. Like the rectangular section we have, AS, which is the area of the tension steel. D, which is the depth of the tension steel. When it comes to width, there are two. Width at the top, also, also known as the flange width, BF, and width at the bottom, also known as the web width, BW. We also have the flange depth. HF. So how do we analyze this section? The answer is it depends on whether the stress the stress block depth S is smaller than HF, like this. Where, where in this case the analysis is exactly the same as the rectangular section. Only have to substitute B with BF. The other possible scenario is S larger than HF. In this case, the analysis is more complex. Let us look at the first case where S is smaller than HF. This is a reputation from the rectangular block analysis. We have two forces, one, one steel force at the bottom and the stress block from the concrete at the top. The variables used are K, where B has been replaced by BF, Level arm is still the same. And we can calculate the amount of tension still used from here. Sorry. We can cut from here we can calculate the amount of tension still used. The question is how do you know this is the condition? The answer is we have to use the equilibrium equation to calculate the value of x s the depth of the stress block. If it is smaller than HF, then we can use this. If not, then we can use the other one. 
This is the other one. This is what happens when S is bigger than HF. Look at the stress diagram on the right. Steel force is the same, but now there are two different concrete stress blocks with two different level arms. It is like the superposition of two different sections. Other than that, we have the equilibrium condition and the formula of moment of resistance. We shall stop here now. In the next videos, we'll go through some work examples to enhance your understanding. Thank you for watching.